everything now says antibacterial. It is without a doubt the worst thing ever invented beyond any doubt. Even the companies that make it have now admitted they created something that is the worst thing ever created. And you'll find that some companies are actually not adding stuff to their soaps anymore. Because we have our bacteria. And because something was antibacterial, it killed the good bacteria. That's really protecting our bodies. It leaves you open to even more bacteria. I mean, I knew that from day one when it came out. I tried to tell people that. Nobody listened. Okay? I was like, you have invented the worst thing ever. But, hey, who am I? With the neutrophils, the, the way that we're going to get these cells produced, do you guys remember when we were talking about the red blood cells and we had that pluripotent cell and that pluripotent cell gave rise to, those, to these other cells? We've got that pluripotent stem cell that is going to give rise to these cells. So the neutrophils, they can actually leave the bone marrow. They'll circulate in the body about 10 to 12 hours. They'll go around and they'll just eat stuff. Anything that they encounter that would be considered a foreign material, they just go around and they eat it. Now, they're making up a huge amount of our white blood cell count. The neutrophils are usually the first responder. What do I mean by that? Because they are so abundant and they are doing all of this fun stuff circulating in the body. They usually encounter it first and attack it. So anything that might be trying to invade the body, neutrophils are usually the first responder. And because they have those lysosomes, they can secrete the enzyme that will hopefully attack that invader. So neutrophils are kind of cool. Now the next one, I really like eosinophils. All right, because have you ever known somebody who had a parasite? My zoo professor in college. So we're talking about parasites. And he has to regale us with the story of the one time he had gone out of the country to do some kind of research. I can't remember what country he went to. But he got infected with the parasite. And he knew he didn't feel good, you know, but he just thought maybe it was just, just a little, you know, just, just getting over the trip and everything. Then he has to tell us about standing in front of class because he always wore shorts, okay? I don't care if it was 30 degrees outside. The man came to class in shorts, okay? And he said he, kept, he felt something wet going down his leg. And the parasite had exited and was going down his leg. All righty then, okay? So, that's what I think about every time I hear ear sunfields. And then when I worked at State, um, 
one of the professors, you know, he, he was a parasitologist. And so all he he, he was actually in another building. <laughs> all of his lab stuff and everything. I guess we just didn't want it in normal circulation. And all of the parasites he had in that little lab. Oh, So, I kind of like eosinophils because they'll increase in number when you're infected with a parasite. If there's some kind of problem with connective tissues, collagens, but they can also increase in number when there's allergies <coughs> and then some diseases of the spleen and the central nervous system. Now, what they'll get to do, they will get to leave once again from that bone marrow, enter into the circulation. Once they do that, um, for example, when they get released during an allergic reaction, what they'll do is they will go and try to make their way to that tissue and they are going to release chemicals such as histamine. Guys ever heard of that? All right, especially like during the spring and stuff. What do we use? What, what do people normally take? Antihistamines. Okay? They're trying to stop the production of the histamine that's getting produced. So, the chemicals that they release, they can also help fight against um, any of the parasites that try to invade us, but they only make up a small amount. So if they need, if they're needed in the in the body, they're going to have to increase in number. All right, and they can if they're needed. The basophils, chickenpox, sinusitis, diabetes. With the basophils, once again, histamine. <coughs> Now, in the grand scheme of things, in a white blood cell count that is normal, basophils are the least in number, usually less than 2%. Now, when they're doing their job, okay, the, these can once again leave the bone marrow, go to the blood circulation, these can migrate out of the blood vessels into the tissues, okay? When they do that, they're, they're also helping with something that could be an inflammatory response. They'll produce histamine. Now, Histamine is a vasodilator. What does that mean? <coughs> does what, Cass? Well, the vaso is the veins and it opens. That means the veins, when we talk about at these levels, Okay, we're at the levels of those capillaries, okay? Capillaries have the ability to st constrict, stop the blood flow, or dilate and increase the blood flow. So histamine would be acting at that area to make those vessels dilate. And if they dilate, that increases the blood flow to that area. That make sense? Now, another secretion that they have, heparin. Ever heard of that? Heparin is an anticoagulant. What does that mean? The clotting. So that's an 
anti clotter. Okay? That's going to also promote blood flow to an area. Okay? Now, in certain conditions, this is good. In others, this is bad. Because when some things happen, if we begin a process that starts blood flow to somewhere, but there's not going to be a control to it, that can be bad. It can start a positive feedback, and that could be bad for the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, because they, the biggest problem with people who are diabetic, we, one of the things that happens, they begin to develop neuropathy because their nervous system is attacked. And so one of the things that happens a lot with the neuropathy, the neuropathy usually starts in the feet, meaning they get all of this tingling, they lose sensation there, and unless the diabetes is brought under control, the neuropathy will actually bring about loss of feeling in the feet, usually the lower legs. Now, that means the person who's diabetic, if they were to have a cut or a nick or something like that, they usually don't know it. And because there's no feeling about it, that's when the problems set in. So usually the loss of the sensation is the biggest problem because they don't know they've been hurt. Yeah, they don't know they've been hurt. So our granulocytes, they are a tad bit interesting. And the neutrophils, definitely. <coughs> With these granulocytes, this is how they would look under the scope. So, for example, you go to the doctor, you're sick, they take some blood, and then they're like, well, you know, the first thing they might notice is a high white blood cell count. But they're just looking at white blood cells all together, okay? There's been no differentiation of looking at those white blood cells. So, they're like, okay, well, you've got an infection slap you on some antibiotics, send you home. You take your antibiotics, but you don't get to feeling a lot better. So you go back to the doctor, that's when they might say, okay, well maybe we need to do a differential blood cell count. And that's where they would determine, okay, maybe my eosinophils are high. Or maybe my basophils would be high. Basophils could be high in the case of a sinus infection. Maybe they didn't give you the right antibiotic for that. Give you another antibiotic, you start feeling better. Does that make sense? Okay, that's what it means to do the differential. So what if someone has a constant, this constant bad one? Um, there would there would have to be something that was making that number high. They would just have to continue doing more tests to try to determine what is it that's causing them to be high. And that's usually what they would do. They would just start doing test after test after test. The one that they know, or the test, the, the test for stuff that they know, that particular white blood cell is produced for. And usually one of them would be off. Now for these lovely A granulocytes, <coughs> now remember, they still have granules, okay? We just couldn't see them. Our lymphocytes. Do you guys remember? 
the huge number that they were in the count, okay? Once again, they're going to come from that pluripotent stem cell. And I keep saying that because I really want you to grasp that concept, okay? That pluripotent cell will give rise to the lymphocytes. And they'll leave the bone marrow. Now, lymphocytes, 